Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and our friends of Cordophon in Darfur. So, um, before we get into it, uh, thank you again, as always, for all the views, likes, and comments. And specifically, I want to get into the comments here. On the last episode, I asked for your feedback, hunt or no hunt? And uh, there were a few a few options laid out as to what we could do. Um, there were a few people who said, you know, don't go hunting. Um, but most everybody overwhelmingly said it makes sense. And shy is not the key aspect here for hunting because maybe he goes hunting to actually get away from me. Even if he has a companion with him, um, it, it makes sense to kind of recharge and refresh because it's less about stress, even though that'll help. Uh, it's significantly more about uh, the prestige needed. Uh, and given that historically, uh, you know, rulers went hunting also to show said prestige, uh, especially to impress people and to in impress maybe also his wife, uh, it makes sense that Ibadu would go on a hunt. So we are going to go on a hunt. We're going to call the decision here. Call a hunt. We'll lose some stress and lose uh, 17 gold which is something we can definitely deal with. Um, here, everything is still as is. Let's uh, take a real look, real quick look. And how are we looking here as far as control goes? Now, I know a few of you also said go to train your commanders versus anything else, but we're doing county control because county control is very important for development. Development means money, and money means winning. So, hit on pause and go hunting. You can see there's a little little war going on here next door. I'll just keep an eye on ish. The foragers. The woods truly is the woods is the woods truly is the mantle of the poor. But as the boar flees in panic from foraging peasants, I feel my patience wearing thin. Surely there must be better things to do in El Obeid than picking roots and mushrooms. Guards, drive the rabble out of my hunting grounds. Could do that. Uh, generous donation should keep them away long enough. Um, let's see. How do we guide him? He's temperate. He's deceitful and shy. You know, he's not really malicious or anti-peasant. As such, uh, peasants denied forests, so popular opinion goes down. Or here, aided peasants for 10 years, so development growth goes up. I, yeah, I think, I feel that would be, he's a little bit more on the pious side. I think that would be more, more his thing. Now, obviously, that gives us the piety. That does not give us the prestige, but so be it. Uh, I took Grim out playing with a bow, and to my surprise, he ran into a wounded doe. He had not hesitated in the slightest to bring it down. Greatness awaits you, Grim. Yes. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the drylands behind. I thought we were in the woods. Anyway, as the servants prepare the boar and other game for the journey back, to heed the call of the wild is usually an adventure. This outing truly delivered both the good and the bad in overabundance. I don't know about the bad. So, let us leave the adventure behind us for now, and we gain 150 prestige. Of course, that's really important, because now we have the prestige with which we can press our claim and overrun East R4. We'll definitely win this war uh, if we declare war here. I can call in my allies. Don't really need it. It's so overwhelmingly in our favor. We are going to declare the war, raise our allies, or raise our allies, raise our troops, and head on over to take East R4 yet again in the name of Cordofan and in the name of our father, who, of course, held this until he didn't. Uh, preaching an Orthodox doctrine. Your core chaplain, oh, okay. So we captured enemy combatants, and we're at 50% war score. Let's take a look at the victory details. Yeah, I mean, we destroyed almost all their levies, almost all their light footmen. We lost, you know, your soldiers, a few levies, 
but overall, there was not much there. My daughter has given birth to a son. To a son. All right. And this son will be called, not Yusuf, but we will call him Keith. Keithoth. There you go. Let's call him Keithoth. I think uh, Keithoth. Uh, may Wepawet grant you long life. Keith, of course, being one of our Patreon supporters, a hero of the realm. If you want to find out how you can get be put into a game, go check out the link to Patreon down in the description. All right, we have a new perk here. We're going to go with healthy. So that's a medium boost to health. And next will be whole of body. Should be very, very nice. Uh, let's see here. We're still low county control there. We're close here on getting the county control up. Once that's done, we're going to move our marshal around county to county to boost the control there. Okay, there's just a few days left. And there we go. We got 15 gold, which is kind of nice. Let's see. We have one prisoner. We can't really do much there. We can't ransom. So we will enforce our demands. And so be it. We'll disband all of our troops. And Cordofan is nice and powerful once again. El Fasher is another one we need to keep an eye on. Dar al Sa'id as well. Uh, who is our half sister. Can't declare a war, which I don't plan on doing anyway. We can demand conversion. Oh, she is Coptic faith now. Hmm. Eh, we're just going to leave that alone for right now. Let's take a look at Elodia. So it's 3,000. He has 2,600 through levies. Uh, we are about 1,700 of those levies. So that would make it a pretty tight close war all right so the control has been increased there so now we will go here and we will see where else uh control we need to go here to west cordofan increase control there and just kind of bit by bit by bit go through the lands here we're gonna go uh west cordofan then east Four and dar al ri as we increase there we are not endorsed by our court priest so we're going to, we could send him a gift. 37 gold gives us 27 opinion. We will do that. And he endorses us now. Um, let's see. Well, I would like your young son, Hunter, to be raised in Gagel. Nope. Not going to happen, man. Not going to happen. So taking a look here. As far as... Where our independence faction is. Military power at 59%. So we're just not there to do anything. We cannot force anybody to join. These are some pretty big numbers here. 1,800. I mean, yeah, it's, this is the Chiefess of Elodia. It'd be nice to add these people to us. I wonder where things sit right now if we would declare an independence war. Yeah, it would be overwhelming against us. It's interesting. I thought our levies are counted to this, but it's not. So that military strength is significantly more powerful than ours. So... I think we need to start looking for some allies elsewhere. And now let's look at our children. Let's see. Our daughter, she is wed. John is dead. Grim. Grim, 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 grim. Let's find you a spouse. Let me hit pause here. And we will look for alliance power. And there's nothing. No alliances whatsoever. Is there an alliance for anybody? It's not, not looking like it. Nobody wants to, 
Nobody wants to ally with us. At all. We're not non-matrilineal. Um, the 73-year-old. Uh, yeah, that's... That's a bummer. Okay, so the alliance game will not work in our favor. We're still very, very far away from that. So what we need to do is actually look at taking El Fasher, who right now only has military force of one. Can we declare a war here? Now we can conquer the county of El Fasher, which has a holy place. That is something we do want. Can we invade the kingdom? No. And that costs us 2,000 prestige. Uh, can we conquer a duchy? It's 250 piety. But our fame is less than illustrious. Yeah, progress towards insignificant, distinguished. Yeah, so we definitely cannot do that. But one of the areas that I want is El Fasher, also because we have a Kush. Holy side. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, the peasants in the chiefdom of South Kordofan are in a good mood. The harvest is bountiful, the roads are safe, and the village elders are telling nonsensical stories of cows producing honey-laden milk and geese-laying golden eggs. The peasants are praising me for their fortune and have sent a delegation carrying gifts. I graciously accept their gifts. So we gain 15 gold. No, they need their surplus more than I do. No, no, he'll take he'll take those gifts for sure. So if we look here at Kush and we look at the holy sites, there is one. Uh, High Chief this has declared war on Countess Kukurg. Uh, our liege has gone to war with who we want to go to war with. Uh, but Al Fasher, that is an, uh, one of the places we want. So, we're going to take Al Fasher. I can't declare the war because, ah, damn it, of course, our liege is already fighting against her. I swear, if they now snake it from us just because I hesitated that little bit to read the notification all about the peasants, may have to come down on those peasants really, really, really hard. Now, the one thing, of course, that was noted in the comments is, of course... The danger that our liege, good or liege, is of a different faith and actually sees Kushitism as evil. So that's uh, that's an issue for sure. Uh, greetings, brother. I would be delighted if your son Hunter could visit my court in Darwona to meet his peers. I'm inviting everyone of note, which unfortunately includes him. Of course, he will be there. And this is now for Grim. All right, we have an available Dynasty Legacy. So let's take a look and see what we want to do here. Well, given that we've got a character who are our leader, our lord, our ruler, who is more into the art of intrigue, I think Guile, the mastery of underhanded schemes and rule founded on fear. Kind of works with him. Yes, he's more temperate and shy and stuff, but this kind of leans into that. I mean, he could go with law, which is mostly fair. Popular opinion goes up. Hunt feast cost goes down. But this uh, increases dread. Uh, and yeah, I think... I think this is the way to go with a character that is more into intrigue. Again, not necessarily going for the optimal play, Going for the role play here. So just so that there is no doubt about it, our liege won their war, and as such, <laughs> they grabbed El Fasher from us. We are now above our domain limit, and so we need to find a domain to give to someone. Solitude in the Great Hall. Grim seems to have been having a difficult time at our latest feast. He slipped underneath one of the tables and there hid from people for the entire meal. The important thing is that the guests know you were there. Shy, that's fine. I'm shy. We're all, we're all fine with that. So, here's the problem we have right now with Domain Limit. We cannot upgrade to a high chieftain, because that would put us on the same rank as Elodia, who now captured El Fasher, which, uh, when you get me started on that. Um, so if we grant a holding to someone, they will have 
our rank, unless I happen to find a holding that is not at that level. Um, and that's a little bit of a problem right now uh, because we don't want to grant anybody any independence. If we grant them independence, well, we've got a bit of an issue. Like if we grant Um Gafala to, I don't know, our grandson, he is now a vassal of the High Chiefdom of Elodia due to their rank now equaling ours. And that is something we do not want to do. We gain 150 prestige through Impeccable Household. That's very nice. And we have an available perk. We're going to go Whole of Body. Whole of Body gives us fertility plus 20%. Health, medium boost, and a stress gain of minus 20%. So Whole of Body it is. Okay, so now we do have the problem. We're going to stay above our domain limit. So that means Vassal Opinion drops by 10. And Domain... And uh, levies and domain taxes drop by 20%. Okay, send a proposal. We're going to decline this. We're not going to make him Coptic at all. But this is an issue. And the fact that that got taken away really ticks me off. All right. What I think we're going to do is actually we are going to move this here. And we are going to raid Kimmer. Uh, Kimmer, they've got... Nothing that can stand against us. So we're going to raise all as raiders. And we're going to go raiding. We can get a little bit of gold out of this. And we can, of course, gain the prestige. Uh, their military strength is basically non-existent. So we're going to go in here and take what we can from them in a raid that will... Most likely be rather successful. Maybe we'll see what else is out here that we could possibly raid over time. All right, we have raided, and now we will head back with our loot and get our money. A discovery. At the end of my spy master Gos God's latest report, she pauses for a moment. There's something you should know about your court priest. Magjin and Bor are engaged in an illicit affair. Bor? Hmm. Boar, your marshal and champion. They. The very thought disturbs me. And we will just learn that secret. We've taken somebody prisoner. See what happens once we get back here and see if we can, you know, ransom them. So we've raided 12. And uh, let's take a look here. Prisoners. So, Shape Hajar uh, for a favor. Let's see, is he any good? He's Kushite, he's Beja. He's Diplomacy. Uh, recruit him. Yeah, let's, let's bring him into our court. This one here is... Meh. He's okay. We'll just recruit him to the court for right now. And Yusuf... No money for Yusuf. Ooh, but he's pretty good. He's good intrigue, decent marshal. So we will definitely recruit him to our court. All right. And now let me take a look out here what we have available to raid as we go through all of this. So we have a new raiding target in Dar Sila. Uh, allies aren't that overly powerful, but the nice thing is here in the capital, we just scroll in here, they have 24 gold sitting there waiting to be looted. So we will take our troops and we will head all the way to Dar Sila for a little bit of raiding and then head back and I think then, then we'll be good with the raiding. A keen eye, grim. Seemed to enjoy our latest feast immensely. Of all things, he could not stop talking about the rich clothes, glaring gold he saw there. These are the trappings of power by which our world is ruled. So he is greedy. I saw how you looked at the servant. Uh, sure. Grim is shaping to be a very interesting character. Mind and body. The further I delve into my studies, the more apparent the link between mind and body becomes. Too much worry can make you sick, and the mind is not no stronger than its vessel. 
Uh, I need a healthy outlet to cope with the strains of ruling. I have read about the benefits of vigorous movement as well as journaling to soothe the frayed nerves. So either go for a run, so 50% chance becomes athletic. Spend the afternoon journaling. I think that is definitely more his thing. He is He's more the intellectual than the athlete. Uh, so we're going to go with that. And you gained wide vocabulary for 15 years. So learning plus one. And our raiding party is almost done here. And now we will head back home. And I think then we're done with raiding. And then I think it's time to take a look at starting to conquer these guys. Now that we don't have El Fasher, it just adds... It adds more fuel to the fire to overthrow those that are oppressing us. Yeah, let's try to figure out how to do that. Now, there were some indications that, or some notes in the comments about maybe converting the faith, but we're not going to do that. That's just not going to happen. And if that costs us the kingdom, if that costs us our title, if that costs us basically this campaign, then so be it, because I feel like that would be a betrayal to everything we're trying to do here. Stone of Glass. As I struggle to make out the tiny letters, okay, we've already done this, right? Um, on the scroll before me, I feel a headache building once again. Why do scribes insist on writing such small symbols? I squint and try again. Nothing short of a miracle with the aid of Stone of Glass... Even old men struggling with bad eyesight could read with ease. Majin, I require your assistance, or I need one of these stones. I need, I definitely need one of these stones, no doubt. We're going to get a little money back now after that raid is done. That is 24 gold has come back. Okay, so we've got a good amount of money. So now let's look around here. We've got Shovak over here. Um, they have a few children. I would very much like to see if we can arrange a marriage with one of these. That is a daughter. Can we arrange a marriage with, uh, one of our children, ideally? Okay, he will not accept. He will not accept... Uh, so he desires an alliance. His opinion of Hunter Court of Hunt is down. His opinion of you is not good. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to do a little bit of diplomacy. Even though we suck at that. We are going to send him a gift. That only increases his opinion of five. Okay, so now we're going to try to sway him. Two years and 30% chance of success. So it's... And, and part of this is also because... Ibadu, diplomatically, not exactly his strength, <laughs> to put it mildly. It's, it's, it's not really something he's really that good at, but it's something we, you know, we gotta, gotta try, gotta look for people here within the region that could be of benefit to us. I mean, Abyssinia, not so much. The Asharis here. So, the Malik here, the kingdom, he is Kushite and Beja. Let's see, he has children. Um, she is already betrothed. Ah, also already betrothed. Ah, they're all betrothed. Bummer. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Waki, Ashari. Nobody who's of our faith. Aside from these guys. That's a shame. Because, yeah, there's there's very little. I mean, we can ally with these guys, but uh, it doesn't really get us far. And all his children are currently spoken for. Chief says, Maj, she is betrothed. But we're friends, we're allies. I'm not gonna go down the route of murdering her. It's only 20% chance. I've already killed all of my other half siblings. But I just don't think that that is necessary at this point. Now we're gonna work on that. If we look at Kimmer, we've got a new lifestyle learning perk. Okay. So we can go through theologian or scholar. So theologian gives us faithful clergy opinion plus 10. Scholar, so cultural fascination progress plus 35%. Pedagogy gives us war, uh, your ward gets an additional skills and become your friends. 
I think scholar is his thing. So these guys, I mean, this will be a really quick one. Your armies are raised. So I guess I got to quickly do that to expand all of our troops. And here right now, we are still at the point where we cannot do this because we are too far away from illustrious. And illustrious just, at this point is just not going to happen. Um, but if we just take it bit by bit, I know some people hate the taking it county by county approach, but I feel like we just kind of got to chip away at them over time. So given that they have no military force, uh, we've got another proposal. We are going to decline, but we are going to declare war here and just take that county. Again, we're going to chip these away generally generationally bit by bit and now send in our troops and just siege down Ein Farah and slowly grow our holdings because this is really the only thing we can do right now to gain enough power internally that maybe we stand a chance of surviving an independence war even though we will most definitely need an external ally to be able to do that. And maybe more than one. All right, we are a few days away from winning this siege. Once that's done, we will now move on their capital, which we actually raided not too terribly long ago. And once we take that capital, I think that will knock down the dominoes enough. I mean, if need be, we can always try for a right down here in Massalt, but the Siege of Turek should get it done. I mean, there's not going to be any loot from this war because, you know, we were the ones who recently raided it. Okay, we are about there. We're at 85%. So now we will have to take their last settlement and that'll end this war in a few months time and I will see you in seven months All right, 20 days left I have been looking around and there are a few wars that are said that we can declare we're going to take a look at that once this is over here in a few days I'll see do we have anybody in prison that we could sell no no, not selling anybody, so we will enforce our demands. So be it, we will disband our troops. And Kordofan has grown quite nicely now. Uh, I still don't see us being able to take on Elodia for independence. I will move this back to our capital just, just to have it there. Uh, in Umgafala right now, we're working on increasing county control because it's very important. But let's take a look at the wars apparently we can declare. So, Damot, we can go for uh, the county. Okay, we could carve out a little bit of that county for some reason. Gojam, as well, we could go for a county, which we wouldn't necessarily gain. Or we can go to Naga, all the way up here, and we can conquer the entire county, and this is a war we could win. Now, that'll, of course, split our our realm a little bit. It does make Elodia stronger and stronger, but it also puts our position within uh, the realm ever so stronger, and then slowly we're going to eat these guys up. If we go to our half-sister... And uh, we cannot declare a war. This will break an alliance. And she would have the overwhelming power. Interesting. So Gazira, the chief of Gazira. So we're not we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. That would that would be a little a little bit suicidal. But Naga is definitely one I'm going to keep my eye on and think about. We've got a few children now who lack guardians. We're going to take that. Our daughter, Bear. So Bear uh, is diplomacy-focused. I can't argue with that. 
So diplomatically, our champion, Shape, will take care of that. It'll be her guardian. And then Hunter. Hunter, intrigue or diplomacy? You know what, Hunter? We're going to move you to our focus. And with that, I will have Yusuf, our courtier, who's also very good at all that intrigue. Kind of keep an eye on you and be your guardian. Let's actually take a look at our council. Right now, our court priest is not the best. Is there anybody better? No. So we're not going to rock the boat there. Gone is our steward. Do we have a better steward? Not enough that it's worth messing with. That Kakui, our chancellor. We do have Shib, our champion, who could be that. He's contrite. He's a good bargainer. He is Coptic Faith. Sheb is Kushite. Uh, are you anything to us other than that? You're a spineless empath. That's about it. So, yes, we will do that. We will change. And Shape will be our, our chancellor. Our marshal who freaking hates us. <laughs> uh, there's really nobody better. I mean, we could put in Kareem. We could put in our daughter as Marshall, that wouldn't be too bad. And Boar hates us anyway. So we could put her, her in charge. Or Kareem, our champion. Uh, Kareem's prowess is 10. Our daughter's prowess is only 4. Her prowess is 9. So Kareem, you are our Marshall now. Spymaster, Gauss God. Um, we could put Yusuf in charge, but he doesn't really like us that much. But he's significantly better. So we will make that switch. And let's send him a gift. Ah, he's so close. So, so close. If we sway him, and that scheme will be ended... Let us focus... He's sterile. Let's focus on Yusuf instead. I feel like we need to get him on our side. Is there anything else we could do? Uh, he already has a guardian. What else could we do? We could grant a title. But we don't want him to be a chief. If we give him a chiefdom, then... Yeah, then, then that's not good, because then he becomes independent. You know what? We are going to sway... Ah, uh, You know what? We're just going to keep this as is. I really want this to run in our favor. What if we offer a concubine? One of our champions. Boar! There you go. That'll boost up. Does not accept, because Boar is infertile. It's probably not a good choice then. What about Gauze God? Will not accept because age. Wow, you are really picky. I'm assuming you wouldn't do this one either because, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Never mind, it was worth a try. <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts on today's episode and the expansion of Cordophon. In the next one, we will continue... Impress. I think Naga will be our next target to try to conquer that land and slowly but surely expand our power base. So we're in a position to press this. I mean, we're still very far away from being able to do this. And we're not able to add anybody. Anybody to it. We can't force anybody to join... Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, that's all not going to work. So, until next time, I'm Rambleder Guy, and don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll talk to you soon.